I will say this, we've pushed the limit and gone over 100 bins a few times, and at 100 bins, uh, our fruit quality gets, uh, in New Zealand language, dodgy. You can obviously manage your crop load by extremely detailed pruning. That has become an increasingly difficult uh, scenario given the availability of labor and the cost of labor. So then you're still going to try to do some of that uh, pre-bloom. Then you get to bloom time, so how aggressively you chemically thin. I mean, this is, a con this is not an organic block, it's a, it's a conventional block, so we have the full gamut of chemical thinners. I mean, this block gets, typical program would be uh, two lime sulfurs with fish oil. Uh, done off the pollen tube growth model. Uh, we would then get into post-harvest uh, sprays and this block uh, the last few years has been thinned with various rates of NAA and carbaryl. Uh, but we've actually tweaked our rates up uh, and become more and more aggressive trying to get at least a reasonable crop load adjustment uh, so the tree does not appear overcropped at um, coming out of petal fall. Um, but then we will delay hand thinning um, to try to suppress. Uh, if you hand thin too early, you'll get fruit that's too big. So I've got the 94 apples on the approximately 30 feet. So that's approximately three apples per three fruiting sites per lineal foot. The activity you're doing is, is you're focused on adjusting the fruiting sites in a specific zone, not over the whole tree. I can't, if I'm missing a portion of the tree, I can't hang an extra three apples down here because it'll mess up the fruiting, resting, fruiting, resting cycle that I need in this zone. Um, the most effective way of doing this, and my it's my belief the most effective way of doing this is with the dormant pruning process. If you're taking and trying to use chemical thinners to adjust this tree that let's say it had 150 fruiting sites, I'm trying to adjust it down to 90 fruiting sites, plus I'm trying to drop those 90 fruiting sites from not from five apples in a cluster, but down to one apple per cluster, that is a, from my point of view and my personal experience, an unmanageable task. But if I get my fruiting site count right or reasonably close, then using the chemical thinning tools is, I've got a pretty good shot at getting from uh, 90 fruiting sites growing or all flowering and getting it down to a lot of singles and maybe some doubles and then having to do some minor touch-up thinning by hand during the uh, summer months. Probably the most important thing um, that we'll recite to our, our staff, um, our team, is crop load, crop load, crop load. So early on, you know, we saw counts as high as 105 to 115 apples. Um, that was after chemical thinning. Uh, we were able to put on another application um, rather quickly at, at like 15 millimeter, uh, kind of as a rescue treatment. Um, after that, we saw numbers that varied anywhere from 40 apples per tree to 65. So at that point, we figure that we're, we're kind of dialed in and then we can go back through with the team and kind of dial the rest in by hand. So we, we want to start thinning honey crisp chemically at bloom. And like I said, traditionally, the better part of the last decade has been ATS, um, you know, two applications, 2% 2 solution. Um, in the last two to three years, we've tried to follow in the pollen growth two model. Um, we did talk to Terrence this year. We did have some cold issues in New York where, you know, we were a little nervous um, about some regions that might have been a little colder than others. So he thought from a risk management standpoint, you know, maybe NAA and, and carbaryl were a good choice. And uh, so we tried that at Bloom. We never tried that before and had really, really good success. Yeah, so later on, um, usually, you know, pint, two pints of carbaryl at Petal Fall. And um, in the 8 to 10 millimeter window, um, we're generally back to Comaxa and carbaryl, um, usually 10 parts per million. And then um, in amongst that time frame, you know, we're, we're, we're measuring apples. So we have our test trees set up for precision thinning. 
and um, you know, three to four days, we're out there with calipers and we're measuring, you know, and we're trying to make assumptions on what's going to stay, what's going to leave. Somewhere around May when we can see the flowers, early bloom, first first 10 days of May maybe. So we opened up the inner tree right here. So we've got some sunlight to optimize. And in essence, we've reduced crop load tremendously right there. So the follow-up at that time is usually we have a couple people dedicated to come in and do some actual bud counts. Um, obviously, they're not with us right at the moment, but um, that would be the step there. <clears throat> the goal there would be to get that information to the pruners as quick as possible. Possible because if we have if we have the data and we're at the end of the row, it really doesn't do us any good to start over. So we want to attack that problem as soon as we can, real time, and uh, make the adjustment and then and put that situation behind us as quickly as possible. So um, we fast forward at that point. We've gotten through May. We've got this beautifully structured tree. Hopefully, the right amount of bud count somewhere in the two to one, as we talked about earlier. And then we're going to come in and mechanical top it. I've got uh, other varieties, uh, some gala blocks uh, that we can hit 80, 90 bends per acre. But uh, with Honeycrisp, we don't seem to hit that high yield. Um, I think at the end of the day, when you're dealing with an apple like Honeycrisp, it's all about how much fruit quality uh, comes out the end of the grater. And that's what we've got to look at with, with this variety, Honeycrisp. And obviously when we move into the redder strains of Honeycrisp, uh, that increases dramatically. So the chemical thin. We have so many different variabilities. One year we can hit a block, a certain variety with a thinner and not get enough off. And the next year we can actually end up with 75% of that fruit rate on the ground. Honeycrisp are definitely a little bit more consistent, I would say, for us as far as a variety. Um, 15, 10 to 15 parts from the 8 to 12 millimeter window for uh, fruit size has been the standard. NAA. Work, yep, yep, NAA. Yep, but it's worked very well for me. I do believe there's some, some pretty good opportunity to take a look at NAA uh, during bloom. We played around with uh, uh, 6BA on galas during bloom and petal fall, but uh, I don't do a lot with carbaryl. Um, most of it's NEA. And we also, usually when we have a full crop, NEA is also in our summer uh, return bloom return program. Bloom. Mm -hmm. We actually put that right in with our covers. Three At least three or, applications. Three or three.